If you like our video, click the button to subscribe to our channel and get easy access to new content. To see our full suite of ad-free video courses, instruction manuals, and quick reference guides, visit us at www.teachucomp.com. Sometimes, a customer's check may be returned for non-sufficient funds. There are three slightly different ways to record a bounce check in QuickBooks Online Plus. You can record a bounce check in QuickBooks Online by either editing the bounce check transaction in your bank feed to note the bounce check expense, or you can manually record an expense or journal entry if you don't use bank feeds. Doing any of these actions lets you record a bounce check from a customer originally invoiced using accounts receivable. For example, you can do this to record a bounce check received from a customer payment for an invoice in the Receive Payment window. Generally, to record a bounce check in QuickBooks Online, you need to perform the following tasks. First, you want to show the customer's check was removed from your bank account and show any bank fees you were charged as a result. You also want to change the status of the original invoice the customer tried to pay back to open to show it remains unpaid. Optionally, you then want to charge the customer for the bank fees and or inconvenience of handling the bounce check. Finally, you need to send a statement to the customer seeking payment for the original unpaid invoice and any resultant fees for the bounce check. First, to record a bounce check in QuickBooks Online, if you have connected a bank feed and the bounce check appears in the bank feed, recategorize the bounced payment to reopen the invoice. Doing this creates an expense which accounts for the deducted money. If you don't use a bank feed in QuickBooks Online, then you can manually enter either an expense or a journal entry to account for the bounce check expense. However, you only perform one of these three actions to account for the bounce check. To recategorize the bounced payment, if you use a bank feed in QuickBooks Online, hover over Transactions in the navigation bar, and then select the Bank Transactions command from the side menu that appears. Then select the Bounce Check or Returned Payment in the bank feed to expand its transaction details. In the transaction details, select the customer whose payment bounced from the Vendor Customer dropdown. Then select the Accounts Receivable account from the Account dropdown. When finished, click the Add button. Doing this offsets the unpaid invoice. Alternatively, to manually record an expense for a bounce check in QuickBooks Online if you don't have a bank feed connected, click the plus new button in the navigation bar, and then click the expense link under the vendor's heading in the drop-down menu to open the expense window. Select the customer that bounced the check from the payee drop-down. Select the account the bounced check's funds were supposed to go into from the payment account drop-down. Enter the date the original check bounced into the payment date field. Type NSF or something similar into the reference number field. In the first row of the category details line item list, select accounts receivable or the specific accounts receivable account you used from the category dropdown. Type NSF check or something like that into the description field. Then enter the amount of the bounce check into the amount column in this row. You must then select the name of the customer who bounced the check from the customer dropdown in this row. Then click the Save and Close button in the toolbar at the bottom of the screen to save the expense and close the page. Alternatively, to manually create a journal entry to negate the bounce check instead of an expense, click the plus new button in the navigation bar, and then click the journal entry link under the other heading to open the journal entry page. Enter the date the check bounced into the journal date field. On the first line of the journal entry, 
Select Accounts Receivable or the specific Accounts Receivable account you used from the Account dropdown. Then enter the amount of the bounce check into the Debits column for that row. Enter the reason for the journal entry, like Customer Bounced Check, into the Description field. You must then select the name of the customer that bounced the check from the Name column. On the second line, select the account the bounced check's funds were supposed to go into from the Payment Account dropdown. Ensure the amount shown in the Credits column for the second line matches the amount shown under the Debits column for the first line to ensure accurate double entry. Then click the Save and Close choice from the drop-down button in the toolbar at the bottom of the window to save the journal entry and close the page. After recording the cost of the bounce check to you using one of the preceding methods in QuickBooks Online, to then remove the bounce check payment from the original invoice to mark it as being unpaid, hover over Sales in the navigation bar, and then select the Customer's Choice in the side menu to open the customer's list. Then click to select the customer whose payment bounced in the list to show their transactions. In the Transaction list, find the payment containing the bounced check and select its Edit link to open it for editing. If needed, then select the Payment Made link. Next, uncheck the checkbox of the invoice to which the bounced check was originally applied. Then, check the new expense or journal entry you recorded to apply it to that instead. Finally, click either Save or Save and Close to save the editing changes to the transaction. Click the Yes button if a prompt appears to tell you that this transaction is linked to others. This step links the bounced check to the expense and marks the original invoice as unpaid. If available to you in your jurisdiction, you may also want to create a separate invoice for the bank service charges you paid. Note that you should not edit the original invoice. Before you create a new separate invoice for the bounced check fees, you must already have or create a service item to recoup the fees paid to the bank. If this is the first time handling a bounce check, then you may need to create one. If not, then this item may already exist in your products and services list, and you should check to make sure one exists. You only need to create it once, and can then use it for bounce checks you receive later. Also, if you do not know the rules for your location, first check with your accountant to ensure you can collect bounce check fees. If you need to create the new service item to collect bounce check fees, click the Settings button in the QuickBooks Online toolbar and then click the Products and Services link under the list heading in the drop down menu to open the Products and Services page. Click the New button in the upper right corner of the page and select the Service Choice to create a new service in the Product Service Information pane. In the Name field in the Basic Info section, enter a name like Bounce Check Fee. Use the Income Account dropdown in the Sales section to select an income or expense account used to track bounced check fees you collect from customers. You can select the Bank Charges and Fees Expense account or click the Add New option to create a new account as needed. Then select Non-Taxable from the Sales Tax Category drop-down. Then click Save and Close to save it and close the pane. To create a separate invoice for the bank fees, click the Plus New button in the navigation bar and then click the Invoice link under the Customer's heading. Select the customer that bounced the check from the customer drop-down. Enter the date the check bounced into the Invoice Date field. 
Then, if legally allowed and if desired, select the Bounce Check Fee item from the Product Service dropdown in the first row of the line item area. Then, enter the amount of the charge from your bank, or the maximum amount you are legally allowed to charge, if applicable, into the Amount column for this line. In the lower left corner of the invoice, type whatever message you want to display to this customer in a statement, should you choose to send a statement for the invoices to pay, into the Memo on Statement field. Then click the Save and Close button to save the invoice and close the window. If you use bank feeds in QuickBooks Online, then you can add the bank service fee for the bounce check as an expense once it appears. Alternatively, to manually record the bank service fee you paid for the bounce check as an expense if you don't use bank feeds in QuickBooks Online, click the plus new button in the navigation bar, and then click the expense link under the vendor's heading to open the expense window. Select your bank from the payee dropdown. Select the bank account from which your bank withdrew the funds from the payment account dropdown. Enter the date the check bounced into the payment date field. Type something like NSF fee into the reference number field to reference the type of expense. Select your bank charges and fees expense account, or whichever expense account you use to track your bank fees, from the category column in the category details line item list. Then enter the amount you were charged by the bank for the bounce check into the amount column. Click the Save and Close button in the toolbar to then save it and close the window. Next, send a billing statement to the customer to collect payment for the open invoices on their account. A billing statement summarizes and consolidates the information for the invoices they owe. To create a statement for the individual customer who bounced the check, hover over the Sales link in the navigation bar, and then click the Customers link in the side menu that appears to open the Customers page. Find the name of the customer to whom to send the statement in the Customers list. Then, click the drop-down in the Action column within their row, and select the Create Statement link in the menu that appears to open the Create Statements window. Depending on your preference, choose either the Balance Forward or Open Item choice from the Statement Type drop-down. Select the dates to show in the statement depending on your choice. Check the checkbox to the left of the customer's name to select them. To preview the statement, click the Print or Preview button in the toolbar at the bottom of the window to examine the statement in a PDF preview window. You can then click the Print icon within the window to print a copy of the statement. Then click the Close button to close the PDF preview window when finished if needed. Alternatively, if you communicate via email with this customer, you can select the Save and Send choice from the drop-down button in the Create Statements window to send an electronic copy of the statement to the customer immediately. Finally, after the customer remits payment for the invoices in this statement, follow your normal procedures to accept payment on the invoice or invoices you created as usual. Remember to click the subscribe button to see more of our videos. See our full suite of courses, instruction manuals, and quick reference guides at www.teachucomp.com.